Hello, church. Hello, Pastor. It is good to see you all on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And hello to all of you who are worshiping with us virtually. It is a joy to be together this morning. I have several announcements. First, right off the bat, I want to say following worship, we will have our annual congregational meeting down in Fellowship Hall. Uh, the annual report was emailed to you. There are a couple of hard copies in the back if you want to have one in your hand for the uh, meeting. Today is Scout Sunday, and we are thrilled to have our scouts from our troops here today. Uh, I hope you all noticed all of the uh, scouts that greeted you when you first came in this morning. Um, and we have two of our Boy Scouts who are going to be our lectors for this morning. It is truly great to have all of you here worshiping with us this morning, and this is my opportunity to thank you all for all of the ways in which you serve here at Grace and in our community. We are blessed to have you all here at Grace, and we love to watch the ways in which you bless this community. So thank you for being part of worship today, and can we thank them for being here this morning? Thank you, you readers did an excellent job this morning. Uh, we continue our Bible study on the women of the Bible on Mondays at 10.30. We will meet in the Roper Parlor and everyone is welcome. Uh, also in the narthex, right behind the door, are your end-of-the-year financial statements, which we would love if you would pick them up when you, before you leave or before you go to the meeting after worship, because it'll save us a lot of money in postage. Um, I would love for you to save some dates. February is a very busy month, so you might want to make sure you take your grace notes home and sync your calendars. Get your pencils out. So, first of all, Wednesday, February 22nd is Ash Wednesday. So that means Tuesday, February 21st, we will have our dinner of pancakes and donuts at six o'clock. Pancakes and donuts. Why would you not come? <laughs> there is a sign-up sheet right behind the door in the narthex. Please sign up and let us know you're coming so we have plenty of pancakes and donuts. Then on Wednesday, we will have our Ash Wednesday worship here at 7 p.m. And our worship will include the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. Then on Sunday, February 26th, we will have the last of our faith celebrations. And we will once again have a brunch immediately following that worship. And this, this celebration's theme is Church, what's it to you? We will be asking you for stories of how the church has shaped your identity, purpose, and outlook on life. In other, in other words, we want to know how the church has positively affected you and what makes you keep coming back. The last faith celebration event that we had was really, really wonderful. And we're hoping that this next one will be equally so. If you sign up to attend this by February 19th, you will once again be entered into our drawing for a special prize for early registration. So register by the 19th so we know how much brunch to have. Those are my announcements. Everything else you need to know to follow along with our service is printed in your bulletins we begin this morning with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. You are invited to either remain seated or to kneel. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. 
we have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now hear the good news. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, the new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. I invite you to turn to hymn 532, and I invite you to stand as we sing. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do, and give us the grace and power to do them, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first 
reading for today is from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your first day, and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel, and to fight, and to strike with your wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of injustice to undo the songs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then the light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your, your vindicator shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your real your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in perfect places, and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Please read responsively Psalm 112, beginning with the first verse. Hallelujah, happy are they who fear the Lord have and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The second reading for today is from the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with the first verse. 
When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come pro proclaiming the mystery of God to in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamations were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with, with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do not speak we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before us ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit reaches everything, even the depths of God. For what human beings know, what is truly human, except the human spirit that, that is within. So also no one comprehends what is, what is the truly God's except, except Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of the God spirit, for they are foolish to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritually discerned, all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord, so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand and gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in that kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come up for a children's message. Have a seat. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On the count of three, can we wake up the balcony, please, with a big shout of good morning? Ready? One, two, three. Good morning! Good morning! Okay, so I have a question for you. What does salt taste like? You're gonna tell me salt. I heard it. You're gonna say it tastes like salt, right? 
Okay. Do you need a lot of salt to taste salt? Or can you taste what salt tastes like with just a couple little pinches? Couple little pinches, right? You don't need a whole pile of salt to know what it tastes like. So what do we use salt for? What, go ahead. To make what, to make food? Food, right? Go ahead. You can use it as seasoning for your food, go ahead. To what? Oh, you can't see, you can do, oh, that's awesome, you can use it when you paint. Did you know that when you bake, you put salt in the things that you bake, you know why? Salt makes things sweeter. Can you believe it? Don't put it on a lemon. Does it make a lemon not taste good? Because a lemon's good on its own. You're gonna make a funny face when you eat the lemon anyway, but put some salt on it, you're gonna make it, yes, that's the face, right there. Okay, so when we think about salt, and we think about all the things that we can use salt for, I think it's really cool that in the gospel reading that I just read, Jesus says to all of us that we are salt, you are salt. You are salt, you are salt. And I think it's really cool that Jesus says that to us this morning because what we know is that salt makes things better. You can use a little bit of salt to make a difference. You can have salt all together to make a difference. When we put salt together, uh, one speck of salt can make a little bit of difference, but like a whole pinch of salt can matter more, meaning the more that you use, the more that you taste the salt. So if we are salt, when we stick together, we can get more things done. So for example, when you scouts go camping, do you, when you go camping, just have one person set up the campsite and the rest of you just sit and wait? No, no, no. You all work together, right? You all work together to set up the campsite. You all work to make, you probably, while you're setting up the campsite, one person goes and collects wood for the fire, right? Not all of you. No, no. You all go out and you get wood for the fire, hopefully. Hopefully you're all working together. So, like salt, when we work together, we get more things done. Same is true in church. Then when we work together, we get more things done. The same is true in school. When you work together, you get more things done. And that's just one of the things I want you to remember about the fact that you're salt. By yourself, you can make a difference. When we work together and put all our saltiness together, we can make an even bigger difference. So that's what I wanted you to think about today. Now we're gonna pray, so I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me, dear God. Dear God. Thank you for reminding us we are the salt of the earth. Help us to spice up this world with the love and grace you share with us every day. And the people said, Amen. Amen. And the devil said, Bummer. And Jesus said, Sweet. Thanks for coming up. You can go to Sunday school. Scouts, you are invited to go to Sunday school if you would like, or you can go back to your seats. I was thinking while you scouts were reading that we apparently like to have the, the texts be the longest possible <laughs> when you are reading. So thank you. You both did a great job. Those were longs. Thank you. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So in our gospel reading for this morning, we are continuing with Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. And like last week, when we heard the Beatitudes, we are again faced with the insidious temptation to hear Jesus's words as requirement rather than blessing, or as command rather than commissioning. Last week in the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are you. Not, if you do this, then you will be blessed. It's simply, 
you are blessed because God says you're blessed. And this week, it is a similar commissioning. Jesus doesn't say, if you want to become salt and light, do this. Or before I will call you salt and light, I'll need to see this from you. Rather, he says simply and directly, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. It is, as with last week's Beatitudes, sheer blessing, commendation, and commissioning. It is as if Jesus is affirming for the disciples and for all of us just what it meant to be God's beloved children. Jesus is affirming all of our identities. And believe me, we need affirming. Because I am sure there are very few of us who go about our daily lives as confident children of God. Instead, most of us forget our blessedness and our identities as salt and light because we've let the world label and identify us as something other than this. Most of us struggle with these identities and do not truly feel we are indeed salt and light. Much of the time, when we hear Jesus saying these things, we do not think he's talking to us or about us. We think he must be talking about those folks who truly deserve to be called salt and light. You know, the Dr. Martin Luther Kings, the Mother Teresas, the women who worked for NASA that that movie Hidden Figures was made about. They are all truly salt and light. I'm sure Jesus is not talking about little old you or me. Certainly there's a special class of awesome, salty, light-bearing people out there, and most of us do not think that is us. But let me remind us all about exactly who it was Jesus was talking to all of those centuries ago. When we hear the Beatitudes and when we hear these passages that follow about being salt and light, we get in our 21st century minds this picture of who Jesus was talking to, and we think those people must look and sound like us. Except that's not entirely true. At the end of chapter 4 of Matthew's Gospel, it tells us exactly who Jesus is speaking to. It says Jesus' fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and he cured them. This was the special class of people to whom he preached. I mean, perhaps there were people in the crowd who totally had their lives together. People who had solid relationships and had paid off all of their debts. People who had nothing to feel shame about, who didn't have terrible secrets and know exact, knew exactly what they were doing. Of course, that is possible that those people were in the crowd too, but you see, it's just not who we are told was coming to Jesus. The ones we are told were coming to Jesus. The ones, presumably, to whom he was preaching were described as the sick, those who were in pain, who fought with demons, who were broken and addicted. In other words, they were people standing in the need of God. We are all here because we are in need of God also. The people who followed Jesus, the people Jesus is speaking to in this morning's gospel, they followed Jesus in a way that the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely have followed him ever since. And to them, he gives a blessing. The poor, those who mourn, those who are meek, Jesus gives them a blessing. You are blessed, he says. And then right after that, he says that they are salt and light. To the broken and hurting, he gives a blessing. And then he says they are of the earth. 
They are earth and breath of God. Like in the second chapter of Genesis where God breathed into the dust of the earth and created humanity to the flawed and sick and crippled, he says, your bodies are created wonders filled with light. The salt in your tears and in your sweat is a reminder that you were created from dust and the very breath of God. So many of us think that to be the light of the world, to let our light so shine before people that you have to be whole, be strong, be perfect. But we forget, as Leonard Cohen wrote, there's a crack in everything and that's how the light gets in. In other words, it is exactly at our points of weakness, of pain, of brokenness, of insufficiency, that force us, like those who originally followed Jesus, to stand in the need of God, to stand in the need of the true light. So perhaps those cracks made from bad choices, anxiety, depression, addiction, struggle, and remorse, maybe those cracks are what lets the light of God's love in. And maybe those same cracks are also how the light gets out. Please do not miss the fact that Jesus does not say, here are the conditions you must meet to be the salt of the earth. He does not say, here are the standards of wholeness you must fulfill in order to be the light of the world. No. He looks out into that crowd of people in pain, people who have been broken open, who have the salt of sweat and tears on their broken bodies, and he says, you are salt. You. You are light. You have that of God within you, the God whose light scatters the darkness. Your imperfect and beautiful bodies are made of chemicals with holiness shining in it. You are made of dust and the very breath of God. In other words, you are broken and Jesus trusts you. Don't wait until you feel as though you have met the conditions of being holy. Trust that Jesus knows what he is doing and that you already are salt and light and love and grace. Don't try and be it. Know that you already are. And then, for the love of God, take that seriously. Because the world needs it, now, more than ever. Today we hear from Jesus himself that God needs us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Today, this gospel message encourages us to speak up for those who have been silenced or have yet to find their voice. Today, the gospel message encourages us to speak up and pushes us out into the world God loves so that others might know they are loved and welcomed and worthy. Why? Because the gospel is not a viewpoint and it is not an opinion. The gospel is not an alternative fact. The gospel is a truth teller. And it does not censor and it does not silence the already oppressed. It does not cast suspicion on those who are other. It does not act out of fear. It does not bar membership. It does not legislate inclusion. It does not look aside and say that God's earth isn't hurting. And it does not ban the perceived outsider. No, today, especially, the gospel reminds us all, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. That's who you are. That's why you're here. So go and flavor 
and season the world. Go and let your light so shine before the world that all may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to hymn 710, and I invite you to stand as we sing. our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Merciful God, inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Bring peace to the war-torn country of Ukraine. Merciful God, loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels, put an end to hunger, and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way. We pray especially this day for Aaron Alfano, Hunter Bean, Joyce Brown, Kathy Brown, Joan Esterly, Mason Fiervanti, Joel Harding, Carl Kendall, Stephanie Bromhead Moore, Skip O'Leary, Ann Shirer, Claire Steffi, Lauren Sullivan, Joan Youngerman, and Kathy Zadlow. Merciful God, shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, the cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. She was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and God does the inviting, and everyone is welcome to the table. Come and taste the joy of God. Given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
invite you all to please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. And now the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing together our sending hymn number 665. Jesus. Thanks be to God. <laughs>